Hey buddy, I hope you're doing well. So to secure your login system from hackers, it is very important to use some cryptographic techniques. There are different cryptographic techniques like encryption decryption is there. There is called hashing the password. Now then you can, one more thing that you can add some extra salt to the hash. But couple of things when you are designing a login system that we need to keep in mind that never ever store plain password into your system, into your database. Because that way you are allowing hackers to hack your system very easily. They don't need to perform any cryptography algorithm to decrypt your password. Second thing that you in mind that when you design your login system, display a message that this password has already taken because this gives an idea to the hackers that this password already exists in system and now you are opening one more door for the hackers to come inside the system and hack the user information. So these things are very important. Never use simple password which is very common password for your login details because then hackers can perform dictionary attack on your profile. What dictionary attack is, they have the one system, it could be any text file or it could be any SQL database, anything. So well, if I can show you, I have this table called dictionary attack and where I have stored, you know, five common password. Normally user use, but they have, you know, like million trillion of password where they store in a one dictionary. What they do, they get that password from their dictionary table or dictionary file and try to log in into the system. So that is why never use common password. So we are going to talk about everything in detail. Let's go ahead and let's see how these things work. So we are going to use this flowchart today to understand the encryption and we are also going to use this program to understand the concept. So let's focus on the first cryptographic concept that is encrypt and decrypt. So let's go ahead and let's understand the flow. So encryption is always called two-way process. So I'm going to talk about why it is two-way process. Let's understand the flow. So what happened whenever a user enter password or whenever any password come into your .NET system or any system comes in plain text like normal English word or anything, right? Then there is an algorithm that we perform to encrypt the password from plain text to cipher text, right? This text. And there is a one key use. So this is very important. In encryption technique, there is always one key used that is going to perform the encryption, right? So when cipher text is converted, like, you know, this text, that password is stored into the database, right? And now in the encryption, there is a one technique called decryption. That means you can get back anytime your password, this word back from this cipher text. And there is a, this technique called decryption. So how it works in the same way, but in reverse order. This time you will fetch the cipher text from your database, right? And they, instead of encryption, now we will perform decryption here, but with the same key. This key is very important. If you lose the key or if you change the key, you will never receive the same password again. So that is why this key is important. Encryption technique to retrieve your password. So this is what encryption and decryption. Okay, now let's go into the code. Whatever I have explained in the data flow diagram, we are going to see here as well. So this code, what it does, it accept one clear text that is like plain text and one key right and then we are going to use this rfc class this is a cryptographic class which use you know if you mouse over you will see it use hmac algorithm right this is going to help us to perform the whole encryption and decryption right let's let me run this uh, how it works let's say let's put a breakpoint here right and what we will do let's call this encrypt method and what i will say that this is my class and let's add a namespace here uh help us yes and i will say hey i wanted to perform encryption on the password right so i will say this is test password and i will use you know a key i will say this is my key one two three right and let's say uh let's add a response so we can check the response mm -mm -mm. okay perfect let's put a breakpoint here and you know remove the breakpoint here okay let's go ahead and let's see how it works okay so uh, uh, uh. Okay, so this is the key that we have re received, right? So what I'm going to do, let's copy this. And this is we have, you know, encrypted password now. So let's here say 
that this is encrypted password right and we will paste it here now we are going to decrypt the password so let's see you know if decryption works or not let's comment this code and we are going to perform the decryption now you know here before we were passing plain text now we have to pass cipher text right that is encrypted password and along with that we need that encryption key that we talked in our data flow diagram right so key same right key one two three and i'm going to pass this password this time instead of common password so i'm going to get my password back let's see if it works so yeah i need to change the method and i have to say decrypt this time let's run this and let's see what happened now so response you see we are able to receive the same password what if i change the key let's try to change the key and let's see it will it still work or is it going or how it is going to behave oh so there is an error that means this system is going to break right so this key is very important now this is the encryption technique now this encryption technique is always considered less secure because if someone is able to steal your key they are always going to you know hack your system because they have whole control on your passwords right so that is why there is a technique called hashing so in the hashing how it works before we jump into this hashing code let's come back to this concept right how this hashing works so what happened in the hashing this there is a password again you know for sure plain text would be there then we perform some hashing algorithm here right there are very popular hashing algorithm like md5 sha bcrypt all these hashing algorithm performed to hash your password now here you know we should never use encrypt word we have to use hash word that we were able to hash our password right and then finally we store that hash into database so we don't store that plain text now it is just one way like encryption encryption was two way process because we were able to you know get back our password back right what in hash you can never get back the password again if it converted one time it is gone for always you are never going to get back that password so that is why it is considered as secure and in hash there is no even key like encryption right there is no key so just hash and you can't get back original password that is why it is always considered as secure and it is tough for hackers to crack this now if we go to the code so how we are hashing the password uh, where is that hash this hash password let's open it so you see we are getting this plain password like this this password right and what we are doing we are converting that into bytes and why bytes because to compute the hash we are using this sh algorithm so here you see this hash algorithm we are going to use this hash algorithm which is sh256 right and this 256 to compute into hash to convert into hash it need a bytes that is why we have converted that plain text into bytes first before we store into our database we convert it into base string and then we are saving it as hash let's try to test this as well so what i will do uh i will you know let's copy paste comment this code and this time i'm going to use hash the password let's say hash the password uh, 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 and for sure there is no key right and we have to just say test so this is my password right and now let's run it and let's see what happened so let's see so we have password we have this hash right now let me tell you one interesting thing about hash right so let's secure this save this password somewhere okay we are saving here now in the hash there is a fixed hash for one word right if you run one more time you will see this is always producing the same hash right let's copy this and let's try to match it so control f control v you see same i am able to find the same password here now let's copy paste again you see the similar word right similar hash now what happened this was good that hackers were never able to decrypt it back and to know your password but there is something called a rainbow table attack so what rainbow table is let's go to sql and what i have done to understand that concept i have created rainbow attack table where you see i am i am storing different algorithm hash 
MD5, SHA, Bcrypt, right? You can store many more. Hacker have, you know, list of algorithms where they are storing the different hash. Now what they do, when they are able to steal your hash password or hash file, they match that hash simply with these hash that they have stored, right? Because you know, hash is going to be same. If there is a password, if we go back to our dictionary attack, if there is a password called God is great, or maybe, you know, any other combination, right? This, this hash is going to be same for one word, right? That is why hackers perform rainbow attack on your system and match that hash that they have still stolen from your system and the system that they are available with different algorithm and wherever they match, they are able to crack your password right that is why there is a concept of something called salt so what salt is salt is little different from hash it is like advanced version of hash so they add some extra string or character or number along with your password and every time that is going to be different okay so let's go again back to the data flow diagram and understand this time this salt right so uh, uh, uh let's go where here you go okay so this works like this way everything is same password is in simple text right there is a hash algorithm performed now before saving this hash into the sql database what salt does it add any random string along your with your hash and store into the system and every time this is going to be a random number right so that is why hacker are never going to perform the rainbow attack on your system because they are not going to match their path their stored rainbow password with your stolen salt right so let's go into the code and let's see how it works now so what i have done here the code is very similar only addition thing is here that you know we have before we save into the database, right, like this, before we save into the database, this is the hash password that we have received. We are concatenating one salt, right? And that salt is, I'm generating good numbers. It's a different algorithm that .NET provides or in the market that you can use to generate salt. But here, just to understand the concept, what I have done, I have created only random string, right? So let's remove the breakpoint from here. And what I will do, instead of hash password, I will say hash with salt. Okay, now, let's you know uh, 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 let's run this and let's see what happened okay so it is running and here you go okay so response is what this is the response right so this is the response let's save the response uh, let's say command and let's save the response right now next time in the hash you remember that you know every time the the hash was same for the same password let's see is it going to behave same way as per our data flow diagram, no, it is not going to be the same way, right? So let's see the password was same. Let's copy the uh, 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 this one and let's see how it works. Let's control F and you see it says no found, right? And even if you paste it here, you will say it is different, right? That is why you are securing your password from any attack, from rainbow attack as well. That is why there is a need of salt. Now, this is fine right there's a big question that now how the user will able to log in into the system because in encryption we had a key right with that key we were able to you know decrypt the password and then we can match the pass that password now how this system will work here in the hash and in the hash salt so how it works let's go back to the data flow diagram again and this is how it works so here Let's imagine you are a user, you add your password in a plain text on the browser, right? So what it does, it goes to the system and hash algorithm is performed. Same algorithm, right? For example, in our case, in the code, we were using, you know, uh, this SH256. So on again, when you enter your username password, SH256 algorithm is performed and it convert your password into hash password right so you know hash is going to be same every time for that password and what happened your repository or your system fetch the hash password from your database over here you try to match the hash the hash which was converted from this password from this algorithm and the hash that you are receiving from your database if the hash match then you allow your user to log into the system if not then you say wrong username password or any error message that you wanted to display right this is how it works but 
this is good in hashing how about the salt because you know in the salt every time when password will come it is going to be different password right then how it will work so there are different ways in that people use what programmers does for example if you see here in my code what i have done before adding the salt i have you know concat i have concatenated with this column right and what i will do now when i have to you know get that password and you know when i have to match this password what i will do i will say this is salt password right this is salt password and so let's say now we have to convert hash because we know hash is always going to be same right so we have to get back the hash from the salt and what all i have to do salt dot split with what the character that we use for concatenation right so i think we have used colon if you go there yes we have used colon so this is going to give us same password now next time so let's you know run this and let's see how it works so salt for sure it is going to be different but you see here we have this colon right that we have used to concatenate so here in the hash the second string is going to be same every time right if you see here let's copy this h n4 and let's you know paste it here uh, uh, uh not here dude let's paste it here and now let's rerun to, to see if we are able to get hash from the salt or not so again you know second let's copy this and let's see control f and control v you see it is matching here so and you see even here in the salt after colon it match so this is how we use to log in into the system from hash and salt so whenever you design your system for hash and salt this is the one way that you can use and there are many ways you know if you look over the internet there are many ways that people use right so that's all for today video i will see you in the next video with some interesting concept